I'm getting in. Yeah, Darren, you can't keep barging in on us like that. Negative. <clears throat> the Mario Tennis series started on the Virtual Boy in 1995, and over the years has become a staple for Nintendo handhelds. The latest one has been given the 3DS makeover, similar to Mario Kart 7 from last year. <laughs> One of the biggest changes is there's no longer a story where you take a character and then level them up to become a tennis pro. Now it's all about going in tournaments. You can choose from two opens, World and Star, with four tournament cups each. You also have a wide selection of Nintendo characters to play as. But the Star Open is only unlocked for characters you've completed the World Open with. Yeah, and I guess this is the way for the game to make the single player game a lot longer, but it also means a lot of grinding. You have to win three matches before you can win a tournament. This means 12 matches just to even reach the first stage of the Star Open with a character. And that's if you win every match. Which is especially frustrating because the first four cups are pretty easy and the Star Open is the most fun and challenging. You also have to repeat everything in doubles. To cut through the tedium, there's always the exhibition mode, and it's good they've given us some courts that play a little bit differently to each other. If you play a drop shot on a sand court, it's going to work a lot better than on a hard court. I especially liked the Galaxy Arena Morph Court, where the surface kept on changing. The game also uses the 3DS's gyroscopes in the first-person view mode. If you hold the 3DS up, the AI will move your character for you, and to aim, you move the 3DS left or right. This mode is pretty fun to begin with, but after a while it gets quite tiring, so you'll soon go back to using the DS as normal. Mm. The new control scheme did my head in a bit. You can hit shots by using the touchpad, but it was hard to concentrate on the game screen at the same time. And I have to say, I started to get cramps in my left hand from solely holding the DS all the time in that hand. You can rest the 3DS on a flat surface, such as a desk barger. They're not called desk helds, Darren, they're called handhelds. Well, I actually thought it was easier to use the touchpad for the chance shots because they were colour-coded. Chance shots give you more power and spin than the normal shots. I didn't like the system very much, Hex, because the AI tells you which shot to play more than half the time. Mm. That only works in the lower levels, though. Once you get to expert and above, you can't always trust the AI. You can even use it to fake out the opponent because they're always expecting the chance shot. There is also a plethora of mini-games such as Ink Showdown, Galaxy Rally, Ring Shot, and my personal favourite, Super Mario Tennis! <laughs> in which you play a modified version of a Super Mario level with a tennis ball. All these games allow you to collect coins which you can use to buy gear. And once you complete all three stages, you can unlock hidden characters. You can also unlock gear by playing through the tournament, but you can only ever customise your me, which is a bit annoying. Even though you have characters which have different skills like all-round, tricky, speed and power, I wanted even more character-specific powers and abilities. Well, I think the game looks great and the 3D is adequate but won't wow you. I think some gamers will get a kick out of this, but others will turn it off pretty quickly. Oh yes, becoming a bit of a theme, isn't it? 3D for a while and then you just turn it off and get back to the game. Yeah. There is online multiplayer as well and we struggled a bit to find a game, but that could just be because the game is quite new. But we should wrap this up, Badge Final Thoughts? Yes, well I think it's a bit grindy and tedious at times, but still a solid tennis title, so I'm giving it 7 out of 10. Well, I think it's a worthy addition to the tennis series, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 rubber chickens. Eight. Are you going to pack right here? Yeah. Right, Go, well, Hex. I can help you with that. You need some underwear, a toothbrush, some travel adapters. Come on, Darren, we've got another sports compilation game to review. Let's get cracking. The average quality percentage of sports compilation games is not high enough for me to wish to join you, Barger. Darren, well, this one's got Mario in it. The average quality percentage of sports compilation games containing Mario is not high All right, all right, Darren. Well, you just sit there and have no fun while I sit over here and have all the fun. We shall see. <laughs> yes, we will. I'm so sorry for doubting you, Darren. Science never lies. Mario Sports Mix for the Wii is a pretty terrible game with music that will slowly drive you close to insanity, if not all the way. I had to listen to a very Darren Christmas just to get some of those tunes out of my head.
There are four major sports to compete in, volleyball, basketball, a weird dodgeball thing, and hockey. There's the usual roster of characters, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, and if you're willing to sink tons of hours into this game and play it over and over again, which we're not really, you can unlock some Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy characters as well. It was good to see such a large roster, Barjo, but when you start playing the game, there is a noticeable drop in the usual standard animation quality we see in Mario games. Jaggies. Yeah, it's Jaggy Central, Darren, and, but more importantly, it plays ugly. Hockey will see you battling for the puck and smashing through traffic cones to score a goal. I have a feeling that those cones are there only because it's so easy to score and they needed a way to make it more than just a shooting match. And the volleyball is so easy, it's near impossible to fail. I did like that once you're in the air, you have a split second to tweak your shot for a better angle. It also means the round is over quicker, which is another bonus. Mm. I'm not getting any younger, Pacho. There's also a weird dodgeball game, which is just a bit confusing. And the best of the bunch is the basketball. It plays a bit like NBA Jam, but nowhere near as fun. As you scoot about the court, you can also pick up abilities, and these will help you knock out the other opponents, but they're a little bit impractical, I found, Darren, because the amount of time it takes you to line them up and set them off, it's just easy to go up and hit the other player and get the ball that way. I also noticed, Barjo, that the artificial intelligence of the other players seem to make mistakes, even if you weren't harassing them. Quite often, they run down to the other end of the court for no reason at all, and sometimes the shot clock runs out before they've even tried to take the shot. There are harder difficulties, but yeah, the whole AI felt a bit random to me, Darren. There is a party mode which sees you leaping about for fruit, knocking each other off a big platform, dodging bombs, and a music game which sees you catching the balls to keep the tunes going. I think the music party game is the only one where you turn the sound back on because it has classic Mario themes and that kind of cool. But even so, you'd only play these modes maybe once and that would be it. Maybe I'm being a little harsh, you know, this is a step up from a waggle fest and that's where you just shake the Wii mode and then unchuck around to see what happens because there is some strategy here in each of the game modes and that's a bonus. But at the end of the day, Darren, I just didn't have any fun here and because of that I can only give it a 4 out of 10 rubber chickens. It's sad, Barjo. There are two types of Mario games. There's the proper ones, like New Super Mario Brothers, and then there are the ones like this. Hmm. Are you gonna laser it, Darren? Negative. It's not worth even a slight depletion of my gamma radiation banks, Barjo. Gamma radiation? Isn't that dangerous? Negative. At least, not to me. Mario Party game was released in 1998 on the Nintendo 64. It involves four players taking turns to roll a die and move around a virtual board trying to collect stars. In the beginning, only six playable characters were on offer to choose from, but now a whole host of characters from the Mario universe can get in on the die rolling action. In Mario Party 9, Bowser has stolen all of the mini stars out of the night sky. So Mario and his crew have to try and win them back by playing the tricky game of wits and chance that Bowser sets out for you. The best thing, as well as being both frustrating and hilarious about Mario Party games, is that anything can happen. I mean, while there's some skill involved in certain minor choices and, of course, winning mini games, it's largely left up to chance, and Bowser's constantly throwing spanners into the works to shake things up, as he calls it. At the beginning of each game, each player rolls the die to determine the order of play, and the player with the highest number will begin as the captain. As you each roll the die to move your vehicle forward, whoever is captain of that round will collect any mini stars in your path, as well as take on whatever task is set out by the space you arrive on. The person with the most mini stars at the end wins! But it's far from that simple. Stars are awarded and taken away from you at almost every turn. You can earn them by winning mini games entering a lucky pipe phase, I got it. or even just getting a surprise bunch of stars in a prize box. Oh, yeah. 
But on the flip side, passing through a group of purple Z stars will zap stars from your total, and nasty creatures like a boo or a shark can catch up to you and actually eat your stars, so it's all based on luck. Well, mostly. The only real way you can alter your outcome or improve your odds is by collecting certain dice along the way. Cool. And you can hold on to three of these at any time. Yeah, so if you can see you're about to run into a group of nasty Z stars that are three spaces in front of you, it's a good time to use your one to two dice block or your zero to one. This will ensure that you're not going to roll anything higher than a one or a two, ensuring the next person will get the Z stars. Then there's Bowser spaces. When you land on one of these, Bowser spins through a list of outcomes that often turn the entire scoreboard upside down. He might zap half your mini stars from you, or completely even the score between each player, or award 10,000 mini stars to one player. This means that right towards the end of the game, the tables can turn multiple times. Oh, I found that so annoying, Darren. So often I'd be winning in the early game, and then suddenly, Hex, you'd land on a Bowser space and suddenly take all my stars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought it was great that at the end it showed you a graph of how your scores changed dramatically throughout the game. But even if it's a really close match, at the end of the game, bonus stars are awarded to the player that used the most special dice, that lost the most stars, and won the most minigames, so that can often change the outcome too. <laughs> yeah! Sadly, the minigames are a bit disappointing. They're standard Wii fair, with lots of random waggling or using the Wiimote sideways to balance. They also don't work too well or are unresponsive and just generally annoying. Affirmative. I was hoping that after nine Mario Party games in the series, the mini-games would have improved somewhat, but sadly, no. I thought the boss fights were really good, though. I mean, they're a kind of mini-game in themselves, but they were always a lot more fun and engaging and required some quick reactions and skill. They often involved several stages too, so they just felt meatier. Yeah, we had some good fun with that cannon fight. Just remember, this is a multiplayer-focused game. Playing on your own is boring. You have to wait for the AI to play out its move, and it's just much more fun playing with a human player. What are you giving it, Hex? Well, I think as far as party games go, this is one of the better ones, especially for players who don't like singing or dancing. I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. I just wish those mini-games had been better. They frustrated me so much, especially the balanced ones, but I'm giving it 7. I still think it's a pretty good party experience. <laughs> <laughs>